Hello and welcome to August Local History Programme from me, Dave Hodgson. Pleased to be with you and thanks for all the nice comments that you've made, particularly from the Odersfeld group on the series so far. This month, a new adventure. During the late 1950s and early 60s, the Central Office of Information produced many 10-minute plus films with the aim of attracting people to northern towns as there were many more job vacancies here and about. They all took the same format of a sort of quick tour of the town, including a few of its amenities. And so it was with Huddersfield. What they probably didn't realise at the time was how many actual golden features of 1950s Huddersfield they'd captured on film whilst producing it. So, ice peeled, you may see a younger version of yourself on it, or recognise your parents or your grandparents. See how many locations you can find as well and remember. Only downside is the commentary, but this was the standard for newsreel pieces of the time, and it is to a certain extent, a bit patronising. So here it is. Over to our projectionist. Once you're across this massive viaduct, you're in Huddersfield, in the north of England. It's neither old and charming, nor bright and new. For this is an industrial town, a product of the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century. It's a place where time is marked by the sound of the factory hooter. And in the mornings, the busiest roads are those which lead to the textile mills and to the engineering works. Some of the firms have gone on from generation to generation employing the same families, a relationship which has helped to mold the district into a closely knit community. Women have always worked in the textile mills. And millions of yards of fine woolen fabrics have gone streaming out of their hands to almost every part of the world. They are quick at finding minor faults and skilled at sewing back stray ends into the cloth before it passes to the men at the steam press. Soon, this material will be on its way to places as far apart as Philadelphia, Montreal, Reykjavik, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. The factories may steam and roar in the valleys, but the town has the good fortune to be on the edge of some fine country. A sharp walk will bring you to the hills of hard rock where the stone walls firmly bind the landscape, unbroken and continuous to the last wilderness, and where the birds still go crying in the empty air as they did before the Romans came. Only coarse grass, which sheep can feed on, can grow on these hills. This country is rich in springs and streams, and you're scarcely ever out of sound of falling water. The water is free from lime, wonderfully soft, good for washing wool and dyeing it. So the people in this region began to weave cloth for sale, first of all, in their own homes. Through the long upper windows could be heard the thud of the treadles and the clack of the shuttle, the sound of the weaver at his loom. Plenty of water, plenty of power. And so factories sprang up and trade flooded. With the coming of steam power, factories moved to the towns. As the textile industry prospered, it became more mechanized and encouraged the growth of engineering. The products of the local engineering industries are now well known throughout the world. Electric motors, tractors, gears, and chemicals. Oh. 
Having many kinds of industries has meant plenty of jobs. Oh yes, the people of Huddersfield are shrewd, hard-working and fiercely independent. But they have a natural gaiety and a zest for pleasure. Today their way of life is gradually changing. The rows of little back-to-back -back houses and narrow streets are giving way to modern blocks of flats and new housing estates. Of course, industry is still a grimy business, but the strict control of heavy smoke from factory chimneys is helping towards cleaner and brighter surroundings. And there's a sparkle and laughter in the eyes of children at play. For their mothers, shopping is easy. The town abounds with shops and stores, not all of which are confined to the main streets. Take a side turning almost anywhere off the main road and it's almost bound to bring you to the market. The lure of the market is strong, even in the rain. Between tablecloths and towels at one extreme and carpets at the other are rows and rows of drapery, boots and shoes and greengrocery stalls. Bargaining here is warm, earthy, good nature. The afternoon wind skirls across the canvas roofs of the stalls and loses itself among the factory chimneys. It dies down a little here, where there's a group of secondary modern schools. These schools were opened in 1956 by Princess Margaret, and there are places for about 2,500 children up to the age of 15. Here, as elsewhere, they can prepare to meet the needs of a technical age unknown to their grandparents. In addition to general academic subjects, the children are taught many of the crafts essential to this modern age, including pottery. These are some examples of the work produced by the pottery class. Later education is provided at the Huddersfield College of Technology. This is one of the largest institutions for further education outside London. As well as looking after the children, Huddersfield helps its old folk. It was one of the first towns to provide homes and work for those beyond the retiring age. There's a splendid scheme called the Workshop for the Elderly. And here you see some of the old people doing small but useful tasks for local industries. evening papers, and time for home. Home is not very far away, for Huddersfield is not a big, sprawling town like London, for example. In less than half an hour, a worker can walk again on home ground and leave behind the bustle of industry for the quiet of his private world of suburban houses and gardens and a meal with the family. And then the evening begins with a fast set of tennis, perhaps. Or a quiet game of bowls. Or a round of golf. For many, there's nothing better than watching a game played by the Huddersfield Town Football Club on their home ground. A good match, clean, fast, and exciting. In the summer, cricket is the favorite. If you hear a local man say that his son was born with a cricket bat in one hand and a copy of the Messiah in the other, you know he's joking. But you also know that he's expressing a local pride both in Yorkshire cricket and in the Huddersfield Choral Society.
a great trip down memory lane, I'm sure you'll agree. And if it stirred any memories or you'd like to comment on the film, please get in touch with us at the address that you see below right now. OK, back next month with another local history programme. Dave Hodgson, looking forward to your company. Bye for now.